thanks for watching my channel. So my channel is called Robotics Post Immersion. And on this channel, I'm going to talk about non-traditional ways of solving robotics problems. And these new ways of solving the problem get us on Euro results. So this is also where the name of the channel comes from, because I'm going to talk about technology that cannot be immersed into the mainstream of existing work. So for this first video, let's talk about the problem called post-estimation mapping. This is the work that I did through my PhD. The post-estimation problem is to know basically where the sensor is or where the robot is in what we call the world. And the world here is the environment that robot operates in. The mapping problem is to take the sensor data collected by the robot and to build a map of the environment. If I summarize, there are two traditional ways of solving this problem. The first one is to use a filter. You can think of it as a meat binder. The data is processed sequentially. So we're using three common sensors here. IMU means inertial measurement unit, camera, and LiDAR. So data comes in a row, and the outputs are the sensor posts and the maps, also in a sequential order. The second approach is called factor graph optimization. This is a full-blown optimization problem. You can think of it as a milkshake. So we take all the data from all the sensors and we formulate this optimization problem, which is a large optimization problem. We solve it in one step. So our approach has multiple layers of processing. You can think of it as a chemical plant. So we take some data from some sensors and we get an initial result of it. Then we add more data and we press it one more time to get a better result. We do this again and again through all the layers. The first advantage of this kind of processing is it's very robust to aggressive mode. Because we have multiple layers of processing, if the first layer does not handle the motion, the second layer handles. I was holding the sensor pack and flipping it around. The color points here are the map or the registered LiDAR data. The coordinate frame is where the sensor is. We drove a car with the sensor mounted on top, far beyond the speed limit. So anybody watching this video, I highly discourage you to copy what I did. For a while, I didn't want to jump over a vehicle, but in the end, I was convinced. So I was wearing the sensor on my head and there was a laptop in my backpack. We tested it everywhere we can, with the handheld, with the hand mount. We drove a vehicle with the sensors mounted on the roof and then we drove it around the city of Pittsburgh. We drove in vegetated environment, we drove in the urban environment with cars passing by. Then we mapped this construction site, held the sensor and walked for half an hour. We tested on drones and what we did was closing the control. Basically we took the sensor poses and the maps and we use those to fly the drone autonomously. We flew high and we flew through a line of trees at 10 meters per second. Talk about the robustness. The first question to ask is what a robust system is. Generally speaking, if one component in a system fails, the whole system fails. It's not a robust system. But on the other hand, if the system still works, as long as one component works, that's robust. Back to our problem. The traditional ways to process the data as a whole when there's bad data coming in and it's not eliminated, the results get affected. For us, we have multiple layers of processing. Each layer has the self-protection. So when there's bad data, the layer is bypassed or partially bypassed. The whole system still works. For example, we drove a knife and the camera data got useless. At some point, the layer was bypassed. Another example is for LiDAR. The extruded environment, like a smooth tunnel, uh, the processing was partially bypassed in the downtrack direction of the tunnel. This way, the whole system still works. I'll make more videos for my channel, and I'll talk about non-traditional ways of solving robotics problems. Thanks for watching.